waiting for. Now let's give a big Palmetto State welcome to the next president of the United States, Donald Trump. Wow. Wow. Thank you. It's been a very interesting three weeks, I will tell you. Somebody was uh, on one of the shows, they were calling it incoming. It's incoming. And we certainly have had a lot of it. And I think we've turned it to our advantage because it started with my opening remarks when I said I'm going to run for president because we want to make this country great again. We have to make our country great again. And I made a statement, and I read a speech. Actually, I didn't read I don't use teleprompters. I don't like that. Too easy. Other people use teleprompters. Maybe when you run for president, you shouldn't be allowed to use a teleprompter because you find out what you're getting. Does that make sense? And very interestingly, we made a speech, got great reviews, fantastic reviews. and. Uh, everybody thought it was a wonderful speech, wonderful opening. And then about a week later, they said, oh, they took a statement and they dissected it. And they cut out a few words, and they said this, and all of a sudden. And it was very interesting. And what that sort of transformed into was the word illegal immigrants. And we brought something up that wasn't even discussed by anybody, Democrat, Republican, wasn't discussed the problem that we're having in this country, it's a tremendous problem with the border and border security and lack of border security and illegal immigrants. It's a huge problem. And now everybody's talking about it and they're saying I was right and people that were criticizing me two weeks ago are calling me and they're saying off the record, Mr. Trump, you were right. And even reporters. Even reporters, a couple of them called, and they sort of don't. I said, would you go on the record? No, 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 we don't want to do that. But we're getting great credit. And then last week, as you know, we had a tremendous rally, 15,000 people in Phoenix, Arizona, and it was unbelievable. And they became, they really came for a reason, and it was illegal immigration. They're being decimated. They want it stopped. I want people to come into the country but they have to do it through the legal process. And we can open up the legal process and make it go faster and all of those things, but it has to be a legal process. You can't have people just pouring into the country. So I was, uh, I was out there and I was taking tremendous abuse, unbelievable abuse actually, and people said, would you apologize, would you apologize? And then there were tremendous crimes that were being noted after my speech. And then you had magnificent Kate from San Francisco killed by an illegal immigrant who was forced across the border back to us, in my opinion, forced by the Mexican government, back to us, and that was taken place, and five times back into our country, and the fifth time was not good 
because Kate should be with us and she's not with us. She was an amazing person from everybody's standpoint and she's not with us. And then other things happened, so many other things. And now people are looking and they're seeing what's going on. So that's become a very, very big topic, illegal immigration. And I can say in terms of setting the standard and setting the force, it would not even be discussed right now, folks. And it's going to be something, I think, that's going to be one of the hot buttons. Now, I watch as politicians are trying to claim that, and that's okay with me. You know, they're all talk, no action, so they won't do anything anyway, just so you understand. They can talk all they want. I mean, I got a little dose of it. Uh, I was coming up, and I see your senator. What a stiff. What a stiff. Lindsey Graham. <laughs> By the way, by the way, he's registered zero in the poll. Zero. He's on television all the time. So this morning, you know, they told me, Mr. Trump, because Bush said, my tone's not nice. My tone. I said, tone, we need tone. We need enthusiasm. We need tone. It's true. <laughs> but they said, and actually Hillary Clinton said, I don't like his tone. We got people having their heads cut off, Christians, in the Middle East. We have people that are being dunked in cages and drowned in the Middle East. We have border security that doesn't exist, and it's not because of our incredible border folks. I mean, they can do the job, and we can build a wall. And by the way, Mexico can pay for the wall, just so you understand. You know, all of these guys say, oh, they'll never pay. Of course they'll pay. If you have the right guy negotiating that, they'll pay. They're making a fortune. And I have a lot of respect for Mexico, by the way. A lot of people said, oh, he doesn't like, I love Mexico. And I love the Mexican people. I've had thousands of Mexicans working for me. I sell apartments for millions of dollars to people from Mexico. They love me. They love me. All of a sudden, I had this thing about, and by the way, Nevada just came out with a poll. And I said, I will win the Hispanic vote. I'm the only one that's going to win the Hispanic vote, because I'm going to take jobs from China and Japan and Mexico and lots of other places. We're going to bring them back here, and they're going to work. They're going to be legal in the country. They're going to work. It's good. Everybody's going to be happy. They're going to make money. So I love the Mexican people. I love the Mexican people. I love Mexico. I really like Mexico. It's a great place. The problem we have is that their leaders are much smarter and sharper and more cunning than our leaders. Are you shocked to hear that, by the way? <laughs> is anybody not sharper and more cunning and smarter than our leaders? Any country in the world? Do we make any good deals anymore? Trade? When was the last time you said, oh, gee, we beat China in a trade deal? Doesn't happen. We beat Japan in a trade deal. I see their boats. I was in Los Angeles. I, I see these ships come in. Biggest ships I've ever seen. Millions of cars coming into this country. Millions. Ships that are five times longer than this Totally sold out building, along with the amphitheaters, by the way. The press never reports that. They never report that. But that's okay. I was going to actually bring the press, have them sit over here so they see. But totally, just bigger ships, cars, 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 they just cut their yen. You know, they just cut their currency. Now it's going to be even harder. I tell the story. A friend of mine is a great excavator. That's what he does. He digs foundations. You didn't think I knew people like that. Those are my people, let me tell you. This guy's great. He's a great excavator, and he was very, very upset because his order for new excavators, ex excavation equipment and tractors, I said, what's wrong with you? He goes, well, I didn't buy Caterpillar. All my life, I bought Caterpillar, and now I went to Komatsu. I said, why did you do that? He said, because Japan just cut their currency so low, Donald, that I had no choice. I had to do it. I feel so guilty. He said, but I owe it to my wife and my family and my employees and the company that I built. They couldn't compete with it. And I said, isn't that sad? I said, do you mind if I use that story? He said, use it. What do you mean use it? For what? I said, I'm going to run for president. That's a good story for me, to be honest. But that's happening, and it's happening even worse with China. They manipulate their currency better than any country in the history of the world in history. History. They're killing us. And if you want to do business with China, it's almost impossible. Because believe me, they tax you. We don't tax because we have people that are stupid. You know, free trade, I believe in it. 
I believe in it. Totally. I'm a free trader. The problem with free trade is you need smart people on our side. Okay? We need smart people. I could take some of the people up here, or I could put them in. They do a great job. But we need smart people. And when you don't have smart people, free trade is not a good thing because it's killing us. So I believe in free trade, but we got to get the right people. Now, China loves me. Who's worse to China than I am? I'm constantly talking about how they're ripping us off, everything else. And yet, I just signed a lease with the largest bank in the world from China. They're in one of my buildings. I sell apartments for 25, 35, 45, 12, 9 million dollars to people from China. I own a big chunk of the Bank of America building in San Francisco. I beat the people from China. I win against China. You can win against China if you're smart. But our people don't have a clue. We give state dinners to the heads of China. I say, why are you doing state dinners for them? They're ripping us left and right. Just take them to McDonald's and go back to the negotiating table. Seriously. It's true. So then they talk about the tone, you know, Hillary and all of them. And then I, I see uh, Rick Perry the other day, and he's so, you know, he's doing very poorly in the polls. He put glasses on so people will think he's smart. And it's, it just doesn't work. You know, people can see through the glasses. But he's got the glasses, the whole deal. Oh, 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 Trump, huh? I say he did a lousy job in the border. You know, the new governor, Governor Abbott, has put in things that should have been put in a long time ago. But I see him, he's so vicious. You know, he used to be really a nice guy. He used to come to see me for contributions and support. All of a sudden, he's, all of a sudden he wants to show he's a tough guy with Trump. So tough. But, you know, the whole thing, and, and uh, he was very nasty. And then you have this guy, Lindsey Graham, a total lightweight. Here's a guy in the private sector, he couldn't get a job, believe me. Couldn't get a job. He couldn't do what you people did. You're all retired as hell and rich, okay? He wouldn't be rich. He'd be poor. But Lindsey Graham, now they say, Donald, your language is inflammatory. Now, I went to the Wharton School of Finance. I was a great student. I built a fortune. I've had many bestsellers. The Art of the Deal is about the biggest selling business book of all time. Did a show that everybody said is going to fail called The Apprentice. And it was a tremendous success. Tremendous, one of the most. By the way, 14, 15 copies of The Apprentice. Every one of them failed. And then they renewed it, by the way. They thought I was going to do it. I said, no, you don't understand, NBC. The head people from NBC and Comcast, they came to my Comcast, they came to my office. And they said, recently, like a few months ago, they said, please, please don't run. We've renewed The Apprentice. It did great. We had a good last season, even after 12 years 14 seasons. I had a great season. And all these copies, everybody did a copy. I won't name the names because I don't want to embarrass anybody, but you know, important names. Not like Trump, but they're important. <laughs> and they all failed, most of them immediately. Most of them immediately. So NBC renews The Apprentice. Everyone said, well, I thought you were running for president. I am. Well, they don't understand it. Well, I told them I'm not doing it. They didn't believe me. Mark Burnett called me. He said, They've given you a major renewal. They did, 28 shows. 28 shows, that's a lot. You know how much money I give up by doing this? These politicians, they run and they run and they win and sometimes they lose and they keep running. That's all they do is run. Most of them don't know what they're doing. They just run. They like, you know, like you wind them up and they run for office. They don't do anything when they get there. I know them better than anybody. So they say they didn't like the way that, you know, the little, I'm a little loud. I'm a little too strong, but I, they don't like it. And then I watch this idiot Lindsey Graham on television today, and he calls me a jackass. He's a jackass. <laughs> you know, I built a company. <laughs> they all said, I'd never run. I announced I was going to run. They all said, oh, that's surprising. Well, he'll never file his form papers. That was two weeks ago. I filed my form papers. Oh, well, he'll never file his financials. And my financials are, wow, well, it's like 98 pages. By the way, a lot of these politicians haven't filed them in there like a half a page, and they still haven't filed them. I'm the only one that's filed, practically. A lot of these guys haven't filed. That was one of the things you have to do to get in the debates. So everyone figured, oh, we'll keep Trump out of the debates, because he'll never file his financials.
because he doesn't want to see, he doesn't want people to see that maybe he's not as wealthy as people thought. Well, it turned out I'm much wealthier than people thought. I built a great company. I wanted to file. If for no other reason, I'm a private company. It's like, I can't tell you how rich you are or how rich you are. You know, you got a lot of money, I guess, but it's in the, who the hell knows? Nobody knows how rich I am. So now I had to file. So it's over $10 billion, hundreds of millions of dollars a year, and I made $213 million filed, certified. On The Apprentice, can you imagine? They paid me $213 million. So you know what that means when I give up The Apprentice to run to help you people straighten out this mess that everybody's created, that the politicians and Obama have created? I mean, it's very expensive, and it's very everything, and I don't care. And when I say about the $10 billion, much more than that, but that's okay. I want it to be conservative. When I say about the $10 billion, I'm not doing that to brag. Who cares? Who cares? If you have a billion, you can live very nicely. I'm only kidding. Who cares? What I'm saying is that's the mindset that we need as a country. We need to take back our jobs from China and other places. We need to make great deals with other countries. Saudi Arabia, as an, I like the Saudis. They're very nice. I make a lot of money with them. They buy all sorts of my stuff, all, all kinds of toys from Trump. They pay me millions and hundreds of millions. But you know what? They make a billion dollars a day, folks. And whenever they're in trouble, our military takes care. You know, we get nothing. South Korea, crazy is right, right? Who said that? Stand up. Stand up. He said it's crazy. It's true. It's true. It's crazy. They make a billion dollars a day. And, the, you know, and by the way, Yemen, the war that Obama thought he won, remember a year ago? Oh, Yemen, great. Oh, it's over. It's over. Well, about two weeks later, it was gone. They took all our equipment. They took all our trucks. Think of this. We make 2,300, 2,300 Humvees, armor-plated, the most incredible. A shot's fired, and the guys we gave him to are allies, you know, our allies. They run. One shot goes in the air. They run. So the enemy takes over 2,300 Humvees. Now, when I saw the number, I said, no, 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 no. Two or three, you mean, not 2,000. You mean they took over two or three? No, no. 2,300 armor-plated Humvees. Better than what we have. They were the best. The enemy has them. We have such stupid leadership. And if you think that with Yemen, you take a look at that border with Saudi Arabia. If you think they're stopping at Yemen, they don't want Yemen. They want the oil. They're going to go. That'll be next. Just like I predicted Iraq was a disaster. I'm the only one who said, don't do Iraq. If you look at Reuters, July of 2004, headline, Trump said, don't do Iraq. And I'm the most militaristic person ever. I will not only do great things for our vets, and I will take care of our vets. Our vets are treated like third-class citizens. <laughs> but I'll build, I will build a military that's so strong that we'll never have to use it, because they're going to say, we're not messing with that guy, and we're not messing with that country. Because our military is decimated. I'm in the real estate business. All the time I get these listings, you know, a base, a naval base, an army base, a marine base. They're always for sale. I say, how many bases can they sell? I mean, they're selling the bases. When you sell the bases, that means they're closing up. And right now, our military is the smallest it's been in decades. And we need it, like, more than ever. And our vets are being treated worse than they've ever been. So the waiting list, worse than they've ever been. The waiting list, as of this morning, I just saw a report. You know, they had the big thing when they had the scandal, because it's the most corrupt thing you've ever seen. And this is why I'm angry at John McCain, for two reasons. Number one, John McCain, you've got to remember this, he's totally about open borders and all of this stuff. And when I went to Arizona, he called these 15,000 unbelievable people Unbelievable. I know crazies. Okay? I know crazies. These were unbelievable American people. And John McCain, who I supported for president, I think I raised him over a million dollars. And he lost. So he can lose. 
I don't hold that against him, but I raised him a lot of money. But he called these people crazies. There were so many they had to turn, like, I think 1,000 or 2,000 away, like they did here. I hear they had to turn a lot of people away. Even though they have the ante rooms all over the place, they have to turn people away. That's the kind of crowds we're getting. But he said that, and today, I hear the waiting list the longest it's ever been. I hear it's worse than it's ever been. And two years ago, remember, in order to get rid of all of the problems, they threw more money at it. But when you have incompetent people at the top, and they put a new guy, but he's not the right guy. He doesn't know what the hell he's doing, according to everybody I know. He has no clue. I know the best people. I know the best managers. I know the best deal makers. I know people that will make us so strong. I know guys that are so good as managers. A lot of times, a deal maker isn't a good manager. And then a manager isn't a good deal maker. But you look at Obamacare with the $5 billion website and the wonderful former governor, who was a wonderful woman, didn't have a clue. She didn't have a clue. It was a mess. So how do you spend $5 billion on a website for something that has to be repealed and replaced with something much better? Has to be. Has to be. We have no choice. Because it's bad for the people. The premiums are going through the roof. The deductibles are ridiculous. You'll never get to use it unless you get hit by a Komatsu. It's the only way you get to use it. It's true. Not Caterpillar. We don't buy them anymore, remember. So this guy, Lindsey Graham, gets out, and he, he's out there, and he calls me a jackass. I'm supposed to be nice. I'm trying to be nice. You know, I'm, I'm working hard to be nice. But every time I turn on, I have, I have some guy that is hitting me, like, hard. Now, the reason they're hitting me, in all fairness, is when you register zero in the poll, what the hell? They have nothing to lose, right? <laughs> and then I thought to myself about Lindsey Graham. You know, I thought it was a very bad statement. You know, you build a fortune. You're a smart guy. You want to do something great for the country. I'm giving up millions of dollars. I had Macy's terminate a deal because, oh, Don, you're a little controversial. You're talking about illegal immigration. I said, it's illegal. But they had no guts. No, it's true. It's true. And all over the world, all over the world, a friend of mine calls me from Paris. Oh, Donald, it's so bad about losing NASCAR. I feel so badly for you. It says, Trump loses NASCAR. Headlines on a business paper in Paris. Guy calls me up to pay condolences. You know what it was? It was a banquet at Doral one night. It's a one-night banquet at Doral. I'll rent it to somebody else for more money in about two seconds in Miami. The next day, Trump loses ESPN. ESPN severs ties with Trump. It was a golf outing for 120 golfers from ESPN at my course in Los Angeles. So now they're going to go to a crummy course because this course is much better than the one they ultimate. It's like not even a contest. So they'll play at this crummy course. By the way, they'll all be back next year. They already told me that. Hey, Don, we're going to get out for a year. We'll be back next year. I said, okay, that's okay. I keep the deposit. <laughs> they both know that. Gave me. No, 100%. 100%. I keep their deposit, and uh, I rent it, so I get two for the price of one. We know what that feeling is. But, you know, all over the place. But I still, it's still a lot of money. Then I sued Univision and NBC. That's going to be easy. I mean, the whole thing is, like, ridiculous, so I give up a lot. But this guy, Lindsey Graham, so he calls me a jackass this morning. And I said to myself, you know, it's amazing. He doesn't seem like a very bright guy, okay? He actually probably seems to me not as bright, honestly, as Rick Perry. I think Rick Perry probably is smarter than Lindsey Graham, but what do I know? Actually, I said about Rick Perry that for, you know, he said, I shouldn't be debating because... I, my spirit is wrong for America, okay? All I want to do is make us rich, save your Social Security, stop having everyone rip us off, and I have bad spirit, right? So he said, he shouldn't be allowed on the debate stage. I said to myself, he shouldn't. And then I tweeted, you know, I have many millions between Facebook and Twitter, it's great. It's like owning a newspaper without the losses. It's incredible. <laughs> incredible. So I tweeted that Rick Perry should have to have an IQ test before getting on the debate stage. And people said that was tough. But today I got called a jackass by this guy. And then I said to myself, hey, didn't this guy call me like four years ago? Yes. He called me four years ago, three, four years ago. Lindsey Graham, I didn't even know who he was. 
He goes, Mr. Trump, this is Senator Lindsey Graham. I wonder if it would be possible for you to call Fox. Because, you know, until I ran, I had that little thing where I'd do it just for fun. Fox and Friends are so great. Brian and Steve and Elizabeth. They're great people, right? They're great. And he wanted to know whether or not I could give him a good reference on Fox and Friends, okay? He wanted to know. Would I do that? And then, of course, he wanted to know whether or not he could come and see me for some campaign contributions. And, you know, I give to everybody. People say, oh, you gave to the Democrats. Well, of course I do, because I'm intelligent. You gave to the Republicans. You gave to Hillary. You gave here. Of course I do. When I want something, I get it. I'm a I was a businessman until a few months ago. When I want something, I give here. And that's part of the problem with our system. Until a couple of months ago, I could have anything, believe me. If a Republican wants, if a Democrat, I give. When I need something, I call. Hey, hey, oh, Mr. Trump, sir, how are you? What can I do for you? I said, nothing really. Be at my wedding, make sure, please. Okay? Or whatever I want. Part of the problem we have. See, with me, I don't need anybody money. Nobody has to give to me. People are sending me money anyway. I said, you don't have to bother, please. Don't bother. Don't give me any. I don't need money. I'm doing it myself. So when people come up to me and they say, Mr. Trump, I'd like you to do this, which is good for him but bad for the country, I'll say, I'm sorry, I can't do it, folks. I'm not doing it. I'm only doing the right thing. <laughs> so, so Lindsey Graham says to me, please, please, whatever you can do. You know what I'm saying? I said, what's this guy, a beggar? He's like begging me to help him with Fox and Friends. So I say, okay, and I'll mention your name. He said, could you mention my name? I said, yes, I'll mention. And he gave me his number, and I found the card. It, I wrote the number down. I don't know if it's the right number. Let's try it. 202. <laughs> 228-0292. I don't know. Maybe it's, you know, it's three, four years ago, so maybe it's an old number. 202-228-0292. So, I don't know. Give it a shot. Your local politician, you know? He won't fix anything, but at least he'll talk to you. So with the vets, I will get things fixed, because that's what I do. I make things better. I made a fortune by making it. By Doral, it was in trouble. I took it out of bankruptcy. I made it. Now it's one of the top resorts in the world, in Miami. Thank you. But, but we have to make our country better. We have to make our country stronger. And we have to make our country richer, and we have to do it fast. We really have to do it fast, because we don't have that much time left. We have to change our mindset in the United States. Now, you know, I have a, a little statement, the American dream is dead. And to just show you how bad it is, the American dream is dead, but I'm going to make it bigger and better and stronger than ever before. Because the press is very dishonest. And I say, always, we're gonna, the American dream is dead, but we're going to make it bigger and better. And everyone stands up, and they go crazy, and they applaud. And I mean it. So my wife goes the other day, I'm talking to her, and she comes, oh, darling, that was such a tough statement. I said, what? What? I said, I thought I did well. And they turn it on. They have, on television, TiVo, they have, the American dream is dead. Cut. That's the end. That's a terrible statement. So I say, the American dream is dead. We're going to make it bigger and better and stronger than ever before. That's what I'm going to do. I know how to do it. Politicians don't know how to do it. They don't know how to do it. And I am so tired of politicians. Nobody knows them better than me. I know them. I know them. I deal with them. If you can't get rich dealing with politicians, there's something wrong with you. Honestly, I know them. The problem is with politicians, and this is almost all of them, not all of them, but the problem is with politicians, it's perseverance, they work, they try, but they only want to keep their job. That's 99% of what they want. I get calls from senators, could we come and see you? You know, you have these campaign finance limits, which are actually a good thing, because, you know, you can just give to. I even tell them, senators call up, I send them a check, it's easy. I said, don't bother. They want to fly from Washington to New York. I mean, how long? Come to my office, and I'm allowed to give them, what, $2,600 or something. I mean, like a whole day is wasted. And I say, this is what they do, and that's what they do, from morning till night. And if you need something, 
Later on, they win their election or they lose their election. If you need something, you call them. They treat you great, like royalty, like royalty. And a businessman, a business person, knows the game. And what you look at, for instance, Jeb Bush. I'm not a fan of Jeb Bush, because Jeb Bush is in favor of Common Core, and he's weak on immigration. Those are two bad things. I think he's a nice person, actually. But he's very in favor of Common Core, meaning he wants your children to be educated from Washington, D.C. by the bureaucrats. Okay? Not good. And he's very weak on immigration. And he's not a deal guy. He's not a deal maker. He's not, can you, who would you rather have negotiating against China, as an example? Trump or Jeb? Or Trump or Hillary? Hi, every, hi. Okay, Hillary. She's another one with the tone. Isn't it amazing they both said tone the same day? It was about the tone, but they both said it the same day. So, I am very excited about this. It's a very interesting situation that's taken place. We had a poll come out yesterday, the Washington Post poll with ABC, and it showed that I had an 11-point lead. That's faster than scheduled. You know, that's faster than scheduled. I mean, that's the good news. The bad news, it drives people crazy. And I don't really know why, because all I want to do is make our country great again. You know, I, it's like, aren't we all on the same track? Whether you're a liberal, a Democrat, a conservative, a Republican, or all of them, I mean, aren't we like sort of all on the same track? You want to make our country great. I know people that are Democrats that love our country. I know people that are liberals, believe it or not, that love our country. And if I can make phenomenal deals with China, which I will, I will, believe me. The best negotiators in the world, I know everyone. I know the bad ones, the good ones, the overrated ones, the ones you never heard of that are better than all of the ones you read about. I know them all. I wrote The Art of the Deal, right? We need The Art of the Deal. We don't have The Art of They never read it in this administration. They're the only people that didn't read it. But if I can bring wealth in so that we can save your Social Security without cuts, every, all the Republicans are talking about we're going to cut, we're going to raise the age, we're going to do this, your Medicare, your Medicaid, and your Social Security. But I'm the only one that knows how to do it. And the way you do it is you have to make our country vibrant so that we can afford it. Right now, we can't afford it. Our GDP went down in the first quarter. It's like down. China went up to 7%, and they're beside themselves. How come it only went up 7%? And China, one year ago, it was announced that China now is the number one in the world. You know that economically, from the standpoint that so matters. China, this is unthinkable. We've allowed them, and it's our money. I mean, you, I love Apple, but where are they made? What do they have, an office here? And all the workers are over there. We gotta, we gotta change it around. We gotta incentivize them so we make Apple and all the other things. They gotta make, be made here. And if China isn't treating us fairly, we have all the cards. The administration doesn't know this. If they're taxing and we're not taxing, which they do, by the way, then we have to make sure that they pay a penalty. And they will stop immediately. And if they don't stop, we'll get rich on receiving taxes from them. And we don't even want to bring up the word. So we're going to save your Social Security. We're going to make it strong and solid. Medicare, Medicaid, we're going to stop the waste and the abuse and the fraud that goes on. We're going to... <laughs> we're going to make proper deals. People mentioned the Iran deal as an example. What, what kind of a deal is this? What kind of a deal? I mean, I've seen one-sided deals before. This is like Sergeant Bergdahl. We get a traitor, a no-good, rotten traitor like Bergdahl, and they get five killers that they most wanted in the whole world who are right now back on the battlefield trying to kill everybody, including us, okay? What kind of a deal is this? Not good, right? I like this. Stand up. Who did that? I like that. You're right. Lousy. A lousy deal. But we only make lousy deals. I call Obama the five-for-one president. We get Bergdahl. They get five guys that they dream of, okay? And that's the problem. So the Iran deal, anytime, anywhere, we want to be able to inspect. They got 
24 days and notice provisions and all. By the time it could be months and months and months, by that time it's gone. But you know what irks me? Look, having nuclear, my uncle was a great professor and scientist and engineer, Dr. John Trump at MIT. Good, good genes, very good genes, okay? Very smart. <laughs> the Wharton School of Finance, very good, very smart. You know, if you're a conservative Republican, if I were a liberal, if like, okay, if I ran as a liberal Democrat, they would say I'm one of the smartest people anywhere in the world. It's true. But when you're a conservative Republican, they try, oh, do they do a number? That's why I always start off, went to Wharton, was a good student. Went there, went there, did this, built a, you know, I have to give my like, credentials all the time because we're at a little disadvantage. But you look at the nuclear deal, the thing that really bothers me, and it would have been so easy, and it's not as, as important as these lives are, nuclear is so powerful. My uncle explained that to me many, many years ago, the power, and that was 35 years ago. He would explain the power of what's going to happen, and he was right. Who would have thought? But when you look at what's going on with the four prisoners, now it used to be three, now it's four. But when it was three, and even now, I would have said, it's all in the messenger. Fellas, and it is fellas because, you know, they, don't, they haven't figured that the women are smarter right now than the men, so, you know, it's going to take them about another 150 years. But the Persians are great negotiators. The Iranians are great negotiators. So, and they, they just killed. They just killed us. This is horrible. But I would have said at the beginning, fellas, you got to let our prisoners go. It's good for, look, you don't need them. You don't want them. It would send a great signal to the United States, and it would make the rest of it easier. Nothing. We get nothing. We don't get the prison. And Kerry said the other day, and so did Obama, we didn't want to negotiate and complicate the negotiations. What's complicated? Say, excuse me, we have four prisoners. We'd like to have them, please. Okay. Oh, it's too complicated to think of. What? This is crazy. Then we're giving them billions and billions and billions of dollars. We shouldn't give it to them. It should have been off the table. Should have been. Why are we giving them? So I said, why aren't you bringing this up and not letting them have all this money? And they didn't want to do that either. They didn't want to complicate it. This is the most incredible. And then, of course, we're fighting them between Yemen, you know, where they're representing the other side, very successfully, by the way, and other places. And they didn't want to talk about the various hotspots because they didn't want to complicate the negotiations. And you know there's a bad signal when you go across and you see on television the Iranian chief negotiator goes home, and they're celebrating him in the streets, right? They're having parades. They're honoring him. Everybody's, who's honoring here? We, we're like a bunch of slobs. We're like a bunch of dopes. We should have doubled up the sanctions, maybe tripled up the sanctions, sat back for about three months, and let them call us. And believe me, I would have made one hell of a deal. That one's easy. That one's easy. So. It's very, very sad. And a lot of people think the reason I'm doing so well in polls, we had a very good Iowa poll yesterday, but that I'm doing so well in the polls is that, you know, when, when North Carolina comes in, your neighbors, and I was, I'm killing everybody in North Carolina. Hopefully I'm gonna do great in South Carolina. And I love Steve Sperrier, by the way, legitimately. <laughs> by the way, I do. I love Steve Sperrier. He's going to do a great job. He's going to have a And say, wherever the hell he is, say hello to him, okay? But he's a good guy. He's got a great coach. But, but when I do great in North Carolina, when I do great in Nevada, which just came out, and I won the Hispanic vote, I won big league, the Hispanics. I'm telling you. <laughs> there is something happening. You know, there used to be the expression, many of you have heard it, and for some reason, for years, it hasn't been, the silent majority. There's a silent majority out there. We're tired of being pushed around, kicked around, and acting and being led by stupid people. They're stupid people. I mean, you have a president who can't just say a few words. Put the flags at half-mast for the five Marines that were just killed. Why? Why? Why?
I mean, think of it. Think of it. How easy. It's almost like, does he read the papers? Does he watch television? Every television, every, whether it's Fox or CNN or MS, any of them, they're all talking about it like, oh, gee, well, all he has to do is say, you know what? Put them, just put them at half mass for a week. If these people were great. They never had a chance. This gun-free zone nonsense. We got to stick up for that Second Amendment. This gun-free zone. <laughs> these guys never, ever had a chance. And by the way, a couple of them, big, big decorations, decorated, tremendous, unbelievable, young, brilliant people, gone. They never had a chance. A gun-free zone. And they're trained with weapons. It's not like, oh, gee, that's not good. That They're trained. These are the best. And they never, they were sitting ducks. They never had a chance because of the stupidity. We have to get rid of that whole gun-free zone nonsense and just stop it. You know, in some of the communities, our recruiting stations and recruiting areas, they actually have civilians surrounding. Can you believe this? Civilians are surrounding that are armed to protect the military soldiers that are our best and our finest, and they are in there, and they don't have guns. So we have civilians surrounding. This is what our country has come to. And, and Kate from San Francisco, Obama calls everybody, and he gets, sends groups over, and send attorney generals over, does investigations, and tremendous, you know, everything at the funerals. Kate from San Francisco, the parents never got a call. Killed by an illegal alien, as we discussed before, never got a call, never got, wouldn't you think, like, man, it's terrible. You know, to have the president, because nothing's gonna bring her back, but you'd think it would be nice if he'd call. So, it's a very, very sad situation for our country. Our country is doing very poorly. The real unemployment rate is probably 21 percent. Some people think it's much higher than that. You know, this 5.3 and 5.5, it's total. Not, you know, you give up looking for a job and you're considered employed. It's a total joke. Bunch of clowns. Bunch of real clowns. But we probably have 21%. A report came out two weeks ago said it's actually 42. The real rate is actually 42%. Could be. But I'm saying 19 to 21%. We have negative growth. We have every country that we do business with looks at us as a patsy. Stupid, stupid people. And everybody's ripping us left and right, no matter whether it's militarily, whether it's with ISIS. I mean, we can't beat ISIS. Tell that to General Douglas MacArthur, we can't beat ISIS. Tell that to General George Patton, oh, General, we can't beat ISIS. Okay? Did you ever see Obama at a news conference explaining when and where we're going to raid the enemy? In two weeks, we're going in through the back, and we're, I'm saying, can you imagine George Patton lying in his grave? He's spinning like a saucer. I can't believe what I'm hearing. And then I say, oh, good, that's smart, because that's camouflage. He's gonna, and he does it. And it turns out to be a tough battle, because they're ready. We need smart leadership. We need brilliant leadership. We have to make America great again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.